The healthcare industry for the last few years and decades have been very focused on improving efficiency through process improvement and drug formulation. And during this process, the time between patient and doctor interaction has decreased down to only 15 minutes per visit. And the challenge of that is, for patients that have chronic disease states, they're left to maintain their quality of life and make sure that they go through the ongoing treatment outside of the hospital, outside of the doctor's office for the rest of their lives. And the problem is, they've been very unsuccessful, especially those that don't have family near them. As a matter of fact, 70% of patients don't take their pills as pres prescribed, resulting in a $300 billion per year cost burden to the healthcare industry. And because of poor insurance rates, seven out of 10 patients will be re-hospitalized for the same conditions, and two out of five actually return back to the hospital within 30 days. Now, if we don't control disease states, chronic disease states, they'll progress into something that's more life-threatening. For diabetic patients, they would have to start having dialysis every three weeks because their kidneys would fail, resulting in a $75,000 per year cost. And people that aren't able to control their blood pressure or cholesterol are at very high risk of open heart surgery. And generally, it costs about $200,000 per procedure. Many patients return back to the hospital to get a secondary procedure because they're unable to con control their conditions. Unfortunately, many will lose their lives due to non-adherence. As a matter of fact, 25%, a fourth of people that die, die from heart failure or heart conditions. And that's the number one reason for death, according to the World Health Organization. So we feel that patients, they need more help to make sure they stay on top of their medication. And what if we leverage their most intimate social network to drive adherence rates? First, I'd like to share a little bit of a story about my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the age of 59, he decided to get a PhD. While he was also running a telecommunications company that he co-founded. So, needless to say, he was burning the candles from both ends. And as a result, he developed high blood pressure, high cholesterol and diabetes. And our doctors told us that as long as he changes his, his lifestyle and continues to take his prescriptions as prescribed, he can enjoy his quality of life for a prolonged period of time. They wouldn't, his, his, his condition wouldn't progress into his actual disease state. So we thought, great, let's get ahead of the curve. So we got him a dog. And it had to be the right dog because if it was too small, and he has a big house, so we know it would just run around the house and he'd still sit in his chair. And if it was too big, he'd look at it and just give it away because it would require too much exercise. So we got him just the right dog, uh, and it was a standard poodle. It needed moderate exercise, and it had some great built-in features. So in the morning, his dog Lulu would bark at him. And after 15 minutes, if he didn't get up and walk her, she would pee all over his floor, right next to his bed. So out of fear of stepping in the in her pee every morning, he would actually walk her. And, it, and since Lulu, his health improved drastically, but still wasn't enough. This doctor said, if he doesn't take his medication on time, we can't control his conditions. So knowing what the, the conditions would progress into, we knew we had to take a proactive approach. So we tried many things. We even downloaded a pill reminder app and used a traditional pill box, and he would just tap, I took it. He doesn't take it, right? <laughs> so we thought, well, how can we make a pill box smarter? How can we detect when he actually forgets to take his pills? Especially because I live in the US and him in Asia. It made it very challenging for us to really understand when he was taking his pills or when he wasn't. 
So we, we, we first decided we wanted to make a pillbox that was better than any pillbox in the world. It had to have uh, extra large capacity, and it had to be arthritis friendly, so people that had arthritis could open it really easily. And for my dad to use it, it had to look sexy, because <laughs> he cares. So we first started with paper prototypes, and when we got a little bit closer to what we probably wanted, we counted it up, and we 3D printed. And after we 3D printed hundreds of prototypes, we got closer to the design that we wanted. So after five broken 3D printers, dozens of trip to Asia's and manufacturers, and, and God knows how much money, we started inching closer to reality. So our first pillbox was born. So what makes our pillbox smart is it has sensors in each compartment that can detect when my dad takes his pills or forgets to take his pills. It also connects to his phones over Bluetooth, so we would actually know when he forgets to take his pills. So let's say my dad needs to take his pills at 10 o'clock. Every 15 minutes, he'll get a notification. And if he ignores them all, after an hour, I will get an escalated notification. <laughs> With simple call to action buttons, I can text him, which sometimes he doesn't read, or I can actually record my daughter's, his granddaughter's, audio message. It's really simple. Press the record, release to send. Then the message is on its way. And what he sees is a very easy way to replay that message. And just like that, he takes his pills. It's just as effective as Lulu peeing all over his floor. So being able to remind him to take his pills on time was only half the battle. We also had to make sure that he had the pills with him. Otherwise, all, all this effort would have been useless. So with a simple picture of his prescriptions, we can actually have his medications delivered to his floor. And also being able to track uh, his progress over time was very important because we, in the future we'd want to see how he was uh, performing in terms of drug adherence. And also, in most families, there's usually a central caregiver. There's that one person everybody leans on. So we made it easy for those caregivers as well to monitor multiple family members. But what was very interesting was we were very successful at, at making sure he took his pills on time. And he, would, he became a lot more active because of his dog. But sometimes he would get dizzy spells. And when he went back to the, to the doctor visits, they would measure his blood pressure and everything seemed fine. So we decided to give the doctors more information. We created a, a new dashboard for the doctors to see what happens uh, each day and correlated some biometric data like his, his daily blood pressure when he measures it at home, his blood sugar, his adherence, as well as the activity to understand why is it that he's getting these side effects. And it turns out <coughs> the blood pressure medicine was lowering it to dangerous rates. So the doctor was able to make adjustments. Beyond solving my father's problem, we were actually able to touch on many different disease states. We helped thousands of people over the course of time. And there were parents that had children with epilepsy used our pillbox to help manage the medication. And there were also pregnant mothers that used our pillbox to remember to take their prenatal vitamins. And also there were also many people with mental health issues that relied on our pillbox so they could function throughout the day. Now we solved my father's problem with a simple idea of care and love. And I feel that through these types of, uh, of starting points, the ideas can really grow. We now give a way for doctors to understand how to do personalized medicine because we made the data correlate and easy to understand. And we do feel that it is possible that pharmaceutical companies can use our pillbox as a tool to develop better drugs because once the, the drugs leave clinical trial, they have no real-world data to understand 
how their drugs are impacting their patients. So from a simple idea of a pill box, taking something very ordinary, we're able to make such a big change. I hope this inspires you to think about how to solve the problems of your loved one by making an ordinary object smart. Thank you.